I'm not ill. Well, I am. I am. But not in the not in the way that you think. There's lots of talking in this one. If you just want to see guitar building, come back later. I'm sorry. We have just got back from the um, the Birmingham Guitar Show, the national guitar, the biggest guitar show of the uh, of the calendar, and a uh, couple of things happened a lot. One was everybody walked up to me and went, "Oh my God, Ben, you look amazing," implying that I looked like shit before. So, and a lot of people thought that the weight loss was because I was dying of something horrible. But the, the, the sheer amount of people at that guitar show who thought this made me realize, seriously, I needed to make this video. And no, I am not, I do not have some wasting sickness or, or a cancerous growth or a 40 foot tapeworm. Uh, it, it, Nothing like that at all. I am in the best health I've been in in a very, very long time, both physically and mentally. And uh, and I realize now that that is actually still, still an ongoing journey. If you watched a video I put out uh, quite a few months ago now, my sense of time passing is now no longer reliable. Uh, I talked about I talked about my mental health. I talked about uh, burnout and how uh, how there are so many different types of burnout that a lot of people don't necessarily know about. There is also the burnout of being ignored, unloved, unappreciated, uh, and um, particularly in a job situation of, of you know, to just a lack of fulfillment, etc. And all of these things can combine. And I've experienced all of those over the last uh, number of years, and it really took its toll. And uh, it's been an interesting thing getting back from that. Uh, I love Crimson Guitars. I love my job. I love that I get to do this. And it, that is literally, I get to do this. Uh, and I wouldn't be able to do that without you guys. And I seriously appreciate it. In spite of the fact that many of you knew that I had ADHD, I did not. I thought that I uh, probably had manic depression. And I have seen people taking antidepressives who just lose all spark and I wrongly decided not to go and seek diagnosis because I didn't want to run the risk of when I was in the mood and mode uh, to film in the headspace as it were I didn't want to lose what I enjoy about this whole thing because without that spark there is no point in my opinion uh, I should have gone for diagnosis because a lot of you knew I had ADHD, as did a bunch of people who knew me in person and didn't really tell me. The, the weight loss thing is, is very interesting. I am now on, on treatment for ADHD, which is making an amazing difference to how I work. Uh, some of it not actually positive. I can't work in the same chaos and carnage uh, that I used to. I can't multitask in the same sort of way. I used to be able to answer 14 questions while in the middle of filming a video and then immediately zone back into that video. What it does allow me to do is differentiate between the 10,000 ideas that I have still. And that hasn't stopped. I still, my brain still ping, 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 pinging away. But I can say, hmm. That one thing, that's what I'm going to think about and concentrate on. The rest of it can you know, just take a back seat, which is apparently how the rest of the world works. The other side effect of this is that uh, it's, a, to a certain extent, an appetite suppressant. Uh, these are amphetamines, uh, low doses. Uh, what I don't think I understood or explained necessarily in the last video is that one of the self-treatments for, for ADHD, it is a dopamine imbalance, it is a lack of happiness chemicals in your body that means you do not want to get up in the morning. You do not want to achieve, you just don't, you can't. It's, it's, you're operating at 70% capacity much of the time. One of the ways that people 
uh, self-medicate is through food. I would have to eat quite a lot. Uh, and I thought that was just normal. I, I would, you know, carbo load, carb load. Tell me in the comments what I'm, what I'm trying to say. With the medication, I do not need to eat anywhere near the amount of calories that I used to. In fact, I kind of struggle because now I need to force myself to, to, to eat, I kind of struggle to eat enough, which is the other thing, I, I am diabetic, type two diabetic, self-inflicted from all of the carbohydrates and sugar I used to eat in order to wake up. I don't have cancer. I don't have any of these horrible things that a lot of you thought I did. Um, not that I know of. Uh, fingers crossed, touch wood. It's, it's all good. Let me go back to the guitar show. I... I took notes. I had conversations with some absolutely mind-blowingly amazing people. And I had a thousand business ideas and potential collaborations and things that I can do, that they can do, that we can do together to change the world. And I stopped talking. And I had this conversation multiple times where people said, oh, Ben, I can see something's just happened behind your eyes there. What did you think? And I said, don't worry, I'll write it down. I'll phone you next week. That there is growth, people. Uh, but it also means that I'm able, I'm concentrating on what's going on. My biggest regret is that I did not do this sooner. If you have even the smallest inkling that this might apply to you, please go and get diagnosed. You might find that you have manic depression, not ADHD or autism or any of these things, but finding out what you have got will give you the coping mechanisms and will shed a, a massive light on who you are, how you are, how you operate and why. A, a lot of my habits have changed. A lot of the uh, things that I used to do that I thought were just a part of me and you know, not necessarily proud of you know, an obsessive uh, collection habit. I, I love collecting things and I still love it, but I now know that that is at least in part because of the dopamine rush that I would get. And now I can look at a thing and say, do I really want that? Or I can look at a new business idea and think, do I really want to do that as well as everything else? Or do I want to laser focus in on something that I have also been passionate about, but for, for far longer? Um, should I have this idea and just give it to a friend and say, hey, why don't you do this? And this was pre-medication. Uh, just knowing I had ADHD helped me to start fixing or understanding what I do. Nowadays, you know, I'll still go off to, uh, you know, to an auction or whatever and, and buy too many interesting books on making and craft and welding. I bought a book on welding this morning. Yeah, I'm getting a buzz from buying a book on welding for a quid. Think of all that knowledge. Uh, but the book itself is the reason, not necessarily the buzz, whereas beforehand it was far more likely to be, oh, that's a nice thing, just buy it and feel naughty for a bit. Please, please, please look after yourself, get diagnosed, uh, and do a little bit of uh, exploration. I was scared to death of a depression diagnosis because I've got so much, so much to be thankful for, so many good things, so much fun, so much access to all of the coolest shit. And here I am thinking I'm depressed. I was scared and I really should have acted on those thoughts. But to finish the story, because I can now cycle back to what I was trying to say, my biggest regret is that over the last 10 or 15 years, we at Crimson Guitars, me personally, uh, I feel like we have not monopolized uh, anywhere near as much as we could have. I have got this amazing thing with this amazing team of people, with you, an amazing audience who, who uh, love and respect and enjoy uh, what we do. And, and at the end of every single other guitar show or maker's show or anything like that that I've ever been to, I've come away with a dozen ideas or more. Uh, and having promised a thousand things to a thousand different people. Oh yeah, we're going to have, you know, an amazing range of, of guitars that I'm working on. And I'm working on it in the back of my mind. I'm thinking about what I'd like to do. 
and by this time next year, you're going to see, you know, we're going to have 50 guitars on the stand. And they're all going to be made out of upcycled materials and made in the UK, da, 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 all, all of this sort of stuff. And then next year, and then the next year, and the next year comes around, and I have not managed to do what I said I would, which is embarrassing and disappointing to the people who, who wanted to see what I do. That, that's been the regret. And I came away from this show thinking, do you know what? I didn't promise anything that I couldn't actually deliver. I didn't promise anything that I didn't genuinely think we are going to be putting all of our efforts into. And, uh, and I'm not going to be disappointing anybody uh, based on my interactions this week. That was my favorite thing about the entire event. And it was an amazing event with lots of very, very cool things. I met some cool people. I played some cool guitars. I came home with some very, very cool guitars um, for the channel and Daily Guitar Draw and the museum. And, and yeah, it was incredible. My favorite part of the whole weekend was that I didn't overpromise, and I'm not going to underdeliver. The the other thing though is that a a company, an organisation, genuinely does rot from the head, and. I've never had a stable head. I have had a business partner in Tom Webster, who is the MD, who runs the company for me, does the day-to-day, -day, who is, uh, he is the yin to my yang. The yin to my yang. He is the person who says, no, Ben, we can't do that. Or, or, or yes, Ben, let's do that, uh, depending on the idea. But I was still chaos personified and not necessarily chaotic good. Uh, which is what I always thought of myself, just just chaos. Uh, there was an, a, a video that we filmed, about, I filmed about a year ago, which it was played up a little bit, but a, a day in the life of Ben Crow, or a day in the life of Crimson Guitars, it was carnage. And I got a buzz from that sort of stuff, but the company suffered. The business suffered. We manufacture guitar building tools. We manufacture guitars. We're a custom shop. We're a guitar building school. And now the daily guitar draw and all of these sorts of things. And I would come in and just ping idea, 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 idea. And somebody's supposed to be working on this and suddenly they're working on this. Or since my diagnosis about a year, year and a half ago, we have been working on changing all of that. So the diagnosis hasn't only helped to get me on an even kill, it is getting the business on an even kill. The way that we work is no longer reactive, it is proactive, it is no longer uh, what are we going to be doing next week. It, we have plans, we have thoughts, we have me meetings, to-do lists. Microsoft Planner is like just incredible people. A diagnosis can have far-reaching, incredibly interesting uh, results that you don't necessarily or wouldn't necessarily think of and i've not even gone into my family life you know i'm going through a divorce going through a divorce you know that i am having a divorce people were asking me how i was and i said well you know i've, I've basically abandoned crimson guitars for six or seven months uh, i had a bit of a recreational divorce and uh, I've been working through my ADHD issues, but uh, hey, I've lost a lot of weight. Woohoo. Not that I thought I was particularly overweight to, to begin with, really. So yeah, there's a, there's a whole personal thing, the divorce, etc., proving that I can go back to a thought. And my diagnosis has, and my knowledge of how I work now, has made that so much easier. So much of how I interact with my children has changed and grown. Well, the reason I stayed married for so long was because of them, uh, but they have all independently come to me uh, and said, I'm so happy that you've done this. I'm so happy that this divorce is happening because you are so much happier and your environment is so much better and we are happier and our relationship is better. And this is coming out of the mouth of a nine-year-old. They are aware of how much better everything is now. Uh, at least on my side of things and uh, and in this environment that I'm crafting for myself and for them. And I genuinely wish that I had gone and gone down this medication, medical diagnosis -y sort of route so much sooner. 
I will leave you with this thought. How many of your, how many of your decisions, <clears throat> how many of the pathways in your life uh, happened to you? How many of these things that have shaped your life were just, I married this person because they were there and because I knew they would say yes. Not necessarily because you loved them or liked them or wanted to do that. How many of these business opportunities have you grabbed with both hands simply because it was a no-brainer? Oh, I could take that vintage tool and buy it for one pound and sell it for a hundred because I know that it's worth a hundred. I didn't stop for one second to think, do I have the headspace to do this? When I started VintageToolShop.com, which I'm seriously considering closing, uh, I was actually <laughs> at the end of my first burnout. And I could not stop. And I bought a tool for a pound, sold it for a hundred on eBay via auction. I didn't know it was worth that much at that point and thought, oh, I can't not do this. How many of the decisions in your life were just because they fell in your lap, not because they were what you had planned, not, not what you had aimed for and worked towards, they just, they just happened. And I'm not saying that that's necessarily a bad thing. Good things do happen. Interesting things do come up that you should grab with both hands. But now I sit back and think, should I? Just because I have to, doesn't mean I should. It's freeing. It's interesting. If we do this much more, this is this is in danger of becoming one of those sort of self-help uh, kind of a kind of a things. And I don't necessarily, uh, I don't necessarily want to go down that route too much. At least not on the channel here. I am in the process of writing a book with a number of very interesting people in the uh, uh, in the sphere. Uh, in the business of facilitating rock and roll, shall we say, uh, that will be about business advice and mental health, I suppose, to a certain extent. And I'm very much looking forward to uh, seeing how that comes up. Uh, look, I, I genuinely appreciate your support. Thank you for watching this uh, infomercial support program. And if you were worried that I was ill uh, and were worried uh, about me in any way, uh, I, I thank from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much. I genuinely appreciate it. And uh, I have got big plans, and they are big plans that are achievable and doable and are being done and are being achieved. So, watch this space. Uh, if you're new to the channel, subscribe. If you enjoyed this, click like. Share it with somebody who uh, uh, may well be helped uh, by it. And most importantly, don't burn out. And if you think you have ADHD or anything like it, it is not a stigma. It should not be. You are chemically slightly different from many of the people around you. You think differently to them. You operate on a different level, and for a lot of things, that level is simply, in my opinion, better. You can think not only outside of the box, you can think outside of, you know, three dimensions, and that is incredible. Uh, but there are also issues with it that come up uh, that, you know, a little bit of medication can help with. So, thanks for watching. Be well, be naughty, be fun. I'll see you soon. Goodbye.